Last week in camp, old Blanton killed a giant. This deer was absolutely huge. This was the hunt of a lifetime out here in Wyoming. Golly, an unbelievable buck. I was able to shoot two does to contribute to the backstrap pile. We had a ton of fun last week. We cut up, we had a good time in camp. We ate a bunch of backstraps. Now it's time for me and Martin to try to get within bow range to fill our Wyoming tag. How did we pull this off? How? How are you? Have y'all ever just had one of those days when you felt like you just should have stayed in bed? Well, I'm mean as gravel, I'm poor as dirt. And I like things better the way they work. Well, I'm strong in the head, but I get things done. I spend too much money to have a little fun. Day three here at 7J. On this next morning hunt, we decided to change things up a little bit. In fact, we decided to head to a whole new farm to get a little bit of a different perspective. I was definitely optimistic about this area. We were seeing a ton of deer they were just in the wrong zip code. Seems like every deer, every decent deer, walk this edge right here, and then we might want to move the stand. The stand was probably on Monster Bucks, too. But it's still kicking. As a general rule, I don't like to wait around. If I see a bunch of deer using the same trail, I like to get aggressive and move that set right into bow range and get in their kitchen. So we decided during lunchtime we were gonna go in there, hang a stand, and hunt it that evening. I'm a big fan of hanging and banging. Apparently me and Jordan, um, we smell like deer calming scent or something because we have been, I don't know if it's just Wyoming or what, but we've had deer come into our wind, like get downwind of us and walk to us. I hope that uh, luck continues. You ever hear yourself say something and immediately regret it? Well, finally we got a few deer coming our way and out to my left, steps a show enough, no doubter. Of course, this big old buck walks way out of bow range and you would have thought that he would have hugged these pines and used cover to get down to the food source. I thought we were in the perfect stand, but he walks out in the middle of a wide open field. I mean, that just goes to show you that on a whitetail deer hunt, a plan sometimes is just a list of things that don't happen. Serious wind indicator is awesome, but it doesn't always give you good news. We just saw a giant go by at 90 yards. Our wind has been perfect all night. But it's swapping all around now. That's actually not bad. And that is terrible. Man, I'm a little frustrated at this point. I thought this stand was gonna be a sure thing slam dunk and we didn't even get close to a good buck. On that third night, you know, it took a while for the deer to start moving, but we saw a lot of deer and saw a really good shooter. He just happened to be out of bow range. 
But Martin, on the other hand, was having an entirely different hunt. You talk about a freaking Chinese fire drill. Bro, like, it's a timeout. Let's just talk. A timeout. What this? It's a bow. No, this bow. What this? It's a Hoyt RX-4. It'll shoot an arrow over 340 feet a second. Kill mammoth? I guess. Look, Carol Baskins. Hey, man. With Caldwell's new Emac Shadows, you only hear what you want to hear. Hey, babe, don't forget, tonight we have dinner with Liz and Shy, and then tomorrow we've got that. But I know you'd rather not do that, so I put 200 rounds of ammo in your truck for you and your friends to go have a good time at the range. Sunday night, your dad asked if you could cut, do the go. Me and your buddy should go to the range, then go camping like you wanted to. I went to the store today and bought all the bacon they had, and I'll be here cooking it in nothing but my apron. Sounds great. Love you too, honey. Butt Nudge, choose your character. Book of Louie, The Fisherman, Paw Paw, Westy, The Redneck. Hey, uh, what are you doing, man? Social distancing. Social distancing? Yep, social distancing. I'm watching my deer's every move while keeping my distance using the Spartan Go Cam and mobile app. Why, what are you doing? Just going on a toilet paper run. Hey, check it out, man. My new wind checker does everything that Cirrus wind checker does. It's got a wind checker, battery charger, flashlight, and a memory card reader. True, but this one fits in your pocket a lot nicer. Oh, it's portable. Get more done. Visit SureCanUSA.com. Hey, after the show, don't forget to go to our YouTube page, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, as well as check out our other social media and find out how you can win cool products from Bomar Nutrition. Red Arrow is brought to you by right. Hoyt. Get serious. Get Hoyt. Realtree. Family, friends, and the outdoors. Antler King. Bigger bucks. Healthier deer. Caldwell. Eliminate the variables that make you miss. A-R-E, outfit for life. And federal premium ammunition. Every shot counts. Now I've had some hunts come together fast and I've had deer come running on a string, but this hunt right here might take the cake. Mark, what? Mark. All our stuff's on the ground. Can I move? Can I move? You talking about an intense hunt? I mean, 
This was full throttle the whole time. This deer never even checked up. He didn't even pause to get shot. What an incredible hunt. This was awesome. You talk about a freaking Chinese fire drill. Bro, like, it's a timeout. That's just talk. A timeout. Gosh dang, biggin', son. I mean, a biggin'. I mean, biggin'. You see his blade on the thing beam? David shot his deer out of this stand. We weren't even gonna hunt here, but the wind boned us for the other stand because it's down at the bottom of the hill. It ain't blowing like it is on top of the hill. So we're like, ah, we'll just sit here, whatever. You know, ain't no big deal. Yes, it was like Chinese torture. Having to, I was watching between your legs. I know. That's the best looking thing that's ever been between your legs. <laughs> I guarantee you, guarantee you. Look how big, oh, <laughs> ha, we tear down the rest of it. Look at that. Ah, oh, that's freaking awesome. Whoo. Huh? Ain't he? <laughs> How did we pull this off? How? I mean, this is like the world's quickest deer hunt. I mean, David thought he had a quick one. Uh -uh. Got you beat, Hammer. You got to enjoy those kind of hunts because they don't happen that quick often. Oh yeah, it's my turn now. After 20 years and only 50 billion taxpayer dollars, we finally came up with the first invisibility suit. I could have saved y'all 49 billion, 999 million, 999,800 dollars. See, this is me last hunting season. Impossible. What kind of ammo is that? I shoot fusion from federal premium ammunition. From primer to projectile, virtually every component is optimized for use in modern sporting rifles and peak ballistic performance through short barrels. Can I try some of that? Whoa, and I hit the target this time. Hey neighbor, what are you doing? Just going to the bank. Aren't you worried about all that money back there? No. I'm putting it in the bed of my truck. Should be fine. Oh yeah, should be fine. You wouldn't do that to your hard-earned money. So why do it to the stuff you spend your hard-earned money on? I protect my gear with ARE truck caps and accessories. ARE, outfit for life. Look at this fool. Are the arrows from Sirius Archery the hardest hitting, most accurate arrows you can find? Is my cameraman a cross-eyed ginger Viking that still gets everything in focus despite all the laws of science and probability? You bet your sweet ass they are. All right, everybody knows what to do, right? Yeah. Okay, one, two, three. With Wheeler's full line of tools for the modern sporting rifle, the options for your custom build are endless. But remember, just because you can build it doesn't always mean you should. Don't be this guy. Wheeler Engineering, build responsibly. Closed captioning provided by the Brotherhood of the Bone Collector. Superior accuracy, unmatched reliability. Red Arrow weapons may be the greatest. Whoa, 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 take it easy on the oversell. We get it, they're awesome. Sorry, I got excited. Order yours now at redarrowweapons.com. Day four. After the sit where we had deer walk out through the middle of the wide open field, we decided to pinch down in there a little tighter to a spot that it looked like all the deer were originating from and coming back to. We had some swirling winds constantly just blowing hard in different directions and man, it, it just really screwed us up that morning. Got two more hunts to get something done. The wind wasn't any better for the evening hunt, so we really only had one option, and it was this little ground blind in a hay field that the deer seemed like they were coming across this little gravel road and feeding right in front of this ground blind. And the deer just pretty much stayed on the other side of the road all night. Y'all remember earlier when I said something to the effect of, as long as our good luck continues? I hope that our luck continues. Yeah, well it didn't. Now I'm not superstitious, but I'm a little stitious, and I think I might have jinxed this.
Day five, this is it. This is my lucky day. It's going to happen. I can feel it. Not many deer moving in this stand for whatever reason. Saw a couple, couple does and a small buck. But the morning's not over yet. Is it just me or does anybody else want to call in an airstrike on a deer that blows at you from out of range? If you're going to talk smack, at least have the plums to do it in bow range. Hey, shut up. This morning sucked. You know, sometimes you get in the groove on a hunt and it feels like you can do no wrong. And then other times it feels like you can't do anything right. At this point on the Wyoming hunt, I feel like I probably should have shot that buck the first morning with no camera light. All we gotta do is just keep hunting. I had a ton of confidence going into this last evening's hunt. It looked like a really good spot. But as that sun started to sink lower and lower, I had a feeling we were gonna go home empty-handed. That's it, show's over. That's just how hunting turns out sometimes. So you can go ahead and turn the channel. Whoa, 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 just kidding, man. Turn, put that remote down, sir. Don't turn the channel, you lost your mind. We asked to stay an extra day, so we got a full another day to get it done and we're gonna get it done. Forgive me, Father, for I've sinned. 63 times I stopped on the way to the stand to get gas. 42 of those times I had a chili dog with onions. Just basically lazy with my scent control. Do you have scent crusher products, my son? Of course I got one. Oh, then you're fine. What are you doing in here? There's a cold front coming. Get out there. The trophy may change, but the preferred release stays the same. Whether you're after antlers or hardware, shoot the release that savvy hunters and tournament winners shoot. Shoot a Scott. Are you reading the back of the box in your voiceover voice? No. I mean, no. So I was thinking about getting back in the gym tomorrow. It's about time. <laughs> We've all been there. Eliminate poor timing with the limb-driven perfection only found in Vapor Trail. Vapor Trail, quit your crying. Antler King makes the best food plot products. You get the highest protein and the most tonnage. My trophy clover lasted six years. That's because it's 100% perennial clover and chicory. No mixed in annuals. Like others. Antler King seed needs less seed to soil contact. And they grow deeper roots. So it's more cold tolerant. It needs less moisture. Most important, deer love Antler King food plots. Antler King. Bigger bucks. Healthier deer. Red Arrow is brought to you by right. Spartan Camera, Polaris, Scent Crusher, Buck Knives, Bomar Archery, Spot Hog, SKB, Vortex Optics, Sirius Archery, Spartan Mowers, Hardy Face Paint, and Hunter's Cloak. Back in the water hole stand, I'm sitting there in the tree stand and all of a sudden this buck walks out in the open at about 30 yards and he's closing the distance. I come to full draw, this deer's at 17 yards, 
and I look over and my cameraman's camera is facing the other way and I say, I was like, man, turn the camera quick, get on this deer. Camera's on the other side of the tree. He tries to get the camera around the tree to get on this buck. The buck sees him move and he busts us. I mean, I had footage on my bow from the GoPro I had. I should have just shot him and used the GoPro footage, but we just can't catch a break, man. I don't know, have y'all ever just had one of those days when you felt like you just should have stayed in bed? That was my day today. And really, it's been my week. We've had the best luck right up until, right up until we're supposed to kill and then something goes wrong. This really is the last evening, but I didn't have a ton of confidence going into this hunt. I'd had enough with this bad luck at this point. Once we get in the stand, we're seeing quite a few deer and I start to get the feeling like we're gonna kill something. I'll tell you one thing, every deer that comes out is loving this fence corner. This might be our ground zero right here. Just when you least expect it is usually when your luck turns around. I got a little, let's see. Yeah, a little bit of gut, but it's 100% liver or one lung liver. He was quartering away a little bit from me, slightly. Anytime you get to where a deer stopped and then he kept going and you see other deer that are running off with him, it's just never a good situation to keep pushing that deer. So we decided to back out that night and come back and find him the next day. Well, me and my man Chris backed out last night. We got to uh, Last Blood and we were talking about it. We were up there and the shot looked a little bit back. It was like last couple of ribs, but he was quartering away. Felt like deer 100% was dead, but we got to a place on the edge of the rim rock up there where he stopped. And I mean, anytime you get to a spot where a deer stops, man, you don't wanna, you don't wanna push it. And we just, we looked over the rim rock and we saw some deer run, which we probably got a little close. So we just backed out and uh, we marked last blood, had this arrow at last blood. And there's a pond right down here and we knew the deer might head toward water and we're walking up. <laughs> I wish you guys could have seen this live, but we're walking up to the pond just to check the water and then we're gonna kind of backtrack. And uh, Jordan's like, you, you guys wanna do a recovery on this deer or what? So we got my buck, man, he's on the hill. We didn't get to see it real time because we're all just walking down to the pond with no cameras rolling. Oh, dude. No ground shrinkage there, man. He's getting bigger, it looks like. You bow hunters all know how this feeling goes. 
no matter how perfect you hit a deer, hitting them and killing them doesn't always mean finding them depending on how much they bleed, where they run, if they find water, that sort of thing. So you're always anxious until you spot that deer down. And when you do, it's one of the best feelings a bow hunter can have. Well, here he is, man. I hit him better than I thought. Had an exit wound right in his shoulder. I mean, that, that hit him perfect. I mean, really, honestly, if you exit in the off shoulder, you've shot a perfect shot. Yeah. It was just quartering away enough to where on camera, we got a little cringy about it. And so we backed out, but I mean, this deer was smoked, absolutely yeah. smoked. <laughs> That's all right right there. Yeah.